A long time ago, I went to a song critique panel where you're sitting in the audience and A&R guys are listening to your music and making comment. And one person raised their hand that said, so what do you guys look for? And the person responded with, it. And I'm thinking, great, so let's all go home and write it. What does that say? And then later on, I saw some work by a gentleman by the name of Ralph Murphy, and he wrote a book called Murphy's Laws of Songwriting. And this made so much sense because essentially what he did is he listened to the top hits out there and then just took their common attributes. And this brings us to the topic of our discussion today. So let's get to it. Point number one, structure. So Ralph Murphy pretty much sums up that the structure of most hit songs has a balance between predictability and surprise. So what this basically means is that the song is predictable so that we can grasp it, but it also has an element of surprise so that we don't get bored, right? And the form that fits this actually is verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus, right? A, B, A, B, C, B, B, right? But what do we all do, right? As simple as that is, what do we all do? We all want to recreate the wheel. And in fact, when I was at Berkeley, I was trying to write songs that were more like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, I mean, it was all over the place, right? Because I just wanted to kind of, you know, invent the wheel. But sometimes the most simplest structures are the most effective structures. So a balance between predictability and surprise. Number two, melody. So this is really, really quite simple, but the bottom line is you want your melodies to be sort of um, humbackable, <laughs> okay? You wanna have humback factor. So in other words, what that basically means is if someone were to listen to your music after listening to it, say, humback the chorus, can they do that, right? And usually, and there's no rules, you guys, but usually, you know, tight little bite-sized melodies, you know, two bar, four bar maybe, you know, one bar that keep on repeating throughout the song that you can grasp and you can then later hum back and stick in your mind, you know, is, is, is the most effective. So hum back factor, you know, melody is extremely important, of course. Um, so, all right, let's move on to number three, lyric. Lyric is so important. Remember this. Nobody cares what you have to say. What's the most important is how what you have to say reflects on the lives of the listeners, right? Essentially, we need to look at it like, you know, we are sort of the leaders of our audience out there who are looking to us to say eloquently what they are feeling. That's the most important, right? They need to be able to understand and grasp it. And we need to be able to give them what they need. Of course, it's important that you sing about what's important to you, but you don't want to sing it in a way where no one really understands what you're saying. You know, you have to sort of decode it for them. And unfortunately, you're not going to be sitting in the back seat of everybody's car as they're driving down the road listening to the radio and listening to your song, and you're going to be able to explain it to them. So just remember, Remember, it's not important what you have to say, but rather how what you have to say reflects on the lives of the listener. So let's move on to or number four, rather, style. So this is important, obviously, because in order to kind of fit into, you know, uh, what's going on or, uh, you know, you got you to gotta be kind of with it, right? Um, now, things have changed as a result of playlists. There's numerous playlists and people have all kinds of um, different uh, themes to their playlists. But essentially, if, um, if, you, if you're, you know, looking to write hit songs and you, and you still are, are trying to get into the radio and that type of thing, you kind of have to write what's, what, what's, what's, you know, happening now, essentially, right? But not so much so that you sound like everyone else. In other words, it's really important to just push a little bit so that there's some element of uniqueness to you and you're not just a copycat. Right? So that could mean taking elements from the past and recreating it to be something new. But 
Innovation is very, very important. Uniqueness is extremely important. It could be the way you phrase your vocals. It could be something stylistically you do after you trail off of your vocals, some kind of signature thing that makes it you. It could even be the production of your record that is unique from everybody else. But definitely strive for some element of uniqueness while still remaining sort of with it and what's going on now. Okay, you guys, so um, let's move on to number five now, which is master quality. So, of course, um, this isn't as much of a problem now as it was in the past because people didn't have access to recording gear. But now a lot of people have access to recording gear, home recording gear, and they can actually make master quality recordings uh, right on their laptops, right? Um, but you, you have to be able to, to, to sort of put your music in between two songs that are published and, and have it sort of be able to play seamlessly without really knowing the, the difference, you know? So hissing or, or crappy drum sounds, you know, you, you can't have that. There are no demos. So you really have to think about creating master quality stuff, especially because when you're pitching, you guys, people do only listen to a couple seconds of your music before they make their decisions. So the production also has a lot to do with that as well, because it says something about how you care about your presentation. All right, so that was tips to improving my songwriting. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because it helps the channel. Also be sure to check out these next videos that can help turn your art into a more successful business. Peace.